Let me go ahead and ask the Lord to bless here, and then we'll jump right into it. Father in heaven, thank you for the chance to speak here and share a few things that you have shown me. May it be a blessing to all and those points that are practical, that would be helpful for each person here. I pray that they would be remembered and put into practice at the right time. Thank you now. Amen. Okay. Let's see. There we go. Today, I've been asked to speak about choices and the decision-making process. So, we're going to look first here at some choices. What does Scripture say about making choices and making decisions? Does anything come to your mind? Choose ye this day. Okay, that's interesting. That actually came to my mind as well. Okay. That might even be the first one. I'm not sure. Let's see. What do I have here? Yes, it is. Choose you this day whom you will serve. Okay. So maybe you saw my notes. I don't know. Okay. There are some other like texts. We also have this. Psalm 95, verses 7 and 8 says, Today, if you will hear his voice, harden not your heart. Similarly, 1 Corinthians 6, 2, Behold, now is the accepted time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. And one more, Isaiah 55, verse 6, says that we are to seek the Lord while he may be found. Call ye upon him while he is near. So now, just look at those for a second, and then answer this question. Is there anything common to all of those? I heard something, but I didn't make it out clearly. Salvation. Okay, well, yeah, they did happen to deal with salvation, but anything else besides that? Oh, okay, yeah. Notice, if I just highlight these words, yes. Notice, choose this day, today, now, now, while he may be found, while he's near. It, it indicates not tearing, just make up your mind and move forward. Uh, here's an interesting statement. This is from volume three of the testimonies. Notice what it says here. I have been shown that the most signal victories and the most fearful deceit, excuse me, defeats have been on the turn of minutes. God requires promptness of action. Delays, doubtings, hesitation, and indecision frequently give the enemy every advantage. My brother, you need to reform. The timing of things may tell much in favor of truth. Victories are frequently lost through delays. There will be crisis in this cause, crises in this cause. Prompt and decisive action at the right time will gain glorious triumphs, while delay and neglect will result in great failures and positive dishonor to God. Rapid movements at the critical moment often disarm the enemy, and he is disappointed and vanquished, for he had expected time to lay plans and work by artifice. I'm hoping that you noticed that it was the same principle here as in those texts from Scripture. I highlighted a few words here. In yellow, the ones that we ought to avoid. Hesitation. Indec what is indecision, by the way? Yeah, when you're, when you're hesitating and refusing to just do something. De delay and neglect. On the other hand, prompt and decisive action. Uh, there was that one about the turn of minutes. Rapid movements. I didn't put it in here, but there's also one where we're told that uh, it, is, it is possible that if you act quickly that you will occasionally make mistakes. But on average, you're going to come out ahead. If we move rapid, see, the devil likes time because then he can formulate very clever plans, but if we start moving quickly, it catches them off guard. And I think we need all the, take advantage of that because we're against a powerful enemy. Now, here's one simple for you. What kind of decisions do OH, it can be OHA or OHC, what kind of decisions do you face on a daily basis? Okay, what to eat, all right. What am I going to wear? Okay. When to go to sleep, okay. Now, these are tough, challenging decisions, right? <laughs> these require great thought, right? Right. No, okay, that's, that's ridiculous, right? Now, I'm not saying that everything you deal with is trivial, but I'm saying that a majority of the decisions you make on a daily basis, they're simple, right? Matter of fact, you probably already know the right answer to them. Therefore, should you take a lot of time on them? No. You know what to do, just do it. Okay, so here's the questions I came up with. Will I get up on time for personal worship? 
Will I do my best? Notice I didn't say will you do, but will you do your best in my studies and vocational area? What clothes will I wear? I heard that one. Let's see. What will I... See. Oh, yes. What will I discuss? Serious subjects or foolish jokes? Oh, I had to put that in there make you uncomfortable. Will I eat temperately or will I wolf down my food? Okay. I know I had to put that in there too, huh? Okay. But anyways, yeah. These are important things, but they're not difficult things. They shouldn't be, right? All right. So do any of them require a lot of time? Well, we already answered that. No, they do not. Uh, here's a statement. You may have seen it before, but it never hurts to review fundamentals. Christ's Object Lessons, page 342, has this bit of pithy counsel. Our time belongs to God. Every moment is His, and we are under the most solemn obligation to improve it to His glory. Of no talent He has given will He require a more strict account than of our time. So guess what? If we don't waste time on small decisions, we have more time left for the bigger matters of life, right? We can get more done. Okay, so just make your decisions and get right to it. Now, the word decision here, this is worth looking at because choice and decision aren't exact. They're related, but they're not precisely the same thing. Does anybody know like the dictionary definition of decision? Probably didn't look it up yesterday, I imagine, but okay. Let, let's just look at this here. The source of all knowledge, dictionary.com, but they're all pretty much the same here. Definition number one, determination as of a question or doubt by making a judgment. They must make a decision between these two contestants. Number two, the act of or need for making up one's mind. This is a difficult decision. Okay. But what I thought was more interesting is this, and I remember I saw this years ago, and when I had a chance to present this, I thought, oh, I'm going to stick this on here. You know, in the dictionary, of course, people don't use dictionaries anymore a lot, but if you, if you know, the one of those books has all the words in it, you look them up, okay. When you do that, it will tell you not only the basic definitions, but then it'll tell you like where the word comes from and trace it back to Old English and French and all these things. Notice this. If you look at the origin of decision, you can go through all this, but notice what in, in yellow here. You trace it back and it, it means ultimately literally a cutting off. Okay, a cutting off. And actually this is biblical. The word for cutting in the Bible is also used for judgment. Don't have time to go in for there today, but it's true. Cutting off. Now, when you cut, I mean, let's just, let's just think about it. You've got a, a, a loaf of bread, right? Let's say you don't have the machine, but you're, you know, you're going to have to do it by hand. I mean, do you take the knife and say, okay, okay, let me go. I mean, do you do that? No, it's stupid, right? What, what, what is, how do you cut bread? Quickly, I mean, you're obviously not going to endanger your fingers, but I mean, yeah, you just, right? That's what cutting off is. It indicates a rapid movement. And so a decision and is not only in the end um, choice that is made, but it involves rapidity, okay? That's, that's part of the point this morning. Now, what else does Scripture admonish us to consider when making a decision? There's something else besides being rapid, right? If you do things rapidly you could start being hasty, right? And when you're hasty, what do you tend to do? Make you make mistakes, right? So there is a, a balance here. Luke 14, 28. For which of you intending to build a tower sitteth not down first and counteth the cost, whether he have sufficient to finish it? So on the one hand, just at the very simple literal understanding here, yeah, you need enough money to do something. But the broader principle is simply this. You do need to think things through, have a plan, right? And those two are not odds because you're thinking, well, that could take some time. Well, that's true. But what we're going to do today is we're going to look at a couple of examples here, practical ones, ones that probably aren't in your daily life now, but most likely will soon be. And as you do that, I think you can see how both things are true, the rapidity and the thinking it through. So let me ask you this. What is a big decision that many of you will most likely face one day. Okay, I heard, I, heard, I heard marriage, I heard college, anything else? I heard something before work. What day? Career, okay. Well, there's, there's a few things here. I decided to just put two because we don't have loads of time here. But yep, one of them is marriage. I knew you'd say that. 
Now, the other one, I didn't hear this one. I su- I'm surprised I didn't hear this one, but this is one of the big marriages, all the or big things. But yes, you know, a job, that's important and everything. But how about buying a home? Okay, that's big, right? And then we can leave it open for, say, job or anything else. But if we go through these two, I think it should illustrate some good principles here. And I think it'll be useful. So let's take a look here first at marriage. Now, with the person next to you, and we're going we're gonna to make this rapid. I want you to, in 30 seconds, I want you to make a list of the five most important things you need to consider when choosing your life partner. Okay? Only 30 seconds, so work quickly. I still hear some buzz, so I'll give you 10 more seconds. Okay, we've had about 40 seconds there. Have you figured it out? Let me just, let me just poll you here. What are some of the things that you came up with that are the most critical factors? Okay, relationship with God, okay, yeah, hopefully you both have it, yes? I'm sorry, what? Adventist home, yes, okay. You're loaded with good counsel there, that's right. Who you get married to. Well, yeah, obviously, who you get married to, yes, okay, that's true, yes. Okay. Anything else? That's three things. Are they mature? Are they mature? Oh, I like that one, yes, okay. Do they love the campus? Okay. Actually, that does, that, does, that does bring a chuckle to us, but yeah, that's true. If you are passionate about sharing your love for the Lord, you're not going to be happy with someone if they're not like-minded. That's true. Okay. These are all true. Let me share with you a few things right here, and I'm not saying these are the only five or that I didn't leave off anything important, but these are some things, okay? It's helpful to do these exercises. Yeah, religion. Do you have the same, I use the word worldview there, but in other words, are you both this group are you both seventh-day adventist do you have the same flavor of adventism you know okay uh, here's another one for you are you close in age didn't hear that one but it's true is that wise why, why might that be important let's say that you're 20 or 30 years different in age okay at some point you might think no 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 in our case it's okay well but think about it. There will come a time where one of you will most likely start having challenges before the other one, right? Do you necessarily want that? You know, it can make life difficult. And so that's one of the reasons we're counseled this. Here's another one for you. How about roles? Okay. Do you have, that may, may have come out too small. Do you have the same view of man's and woman's marital roles? There is room for some growth here and everything, right? If you're significantly different, that's going to cause friction. Marriage is challenging enough. You don't need that. So look through it. Don't just say, they're so beautiful. No. I mean, they might be, but if you're so different, it's going to be so unpleasant. Okay. Uh, What do we have here? Oh, yeah. Do you share the same vision of what you're going to accomplish together? If one of you has a burden to be in the mission field and one of you says, no, I want to... Um, I don't know, I want to form my own company right here or something. Both of those can be fine, but they're not really compatible probably, right? So don't be too starry-eyed. Think these things through. Oh, yes, children. That could be an important one, right? Do you both want to have children? Yeah, well, say so you want it. But now, what if you both say, yes, one of them says, I've always wanted that perfect child. And the other says, well, I've always wanted six children. That's fine, but you probably need to each have somebody different, right? Uh, money, here's one for you. That should really be important. 
Now you're thinking, yeah, I want to marry Mr. Moneybags or Mrs. Moneybags. No, no. But how about this? Are you both debt free? So I'm not just saying ask if the other one's debt free. Are you debt free? If you're not, you better get that taken care of because that's going to cause a big problem. And what does debt free include? Well, credit cards, student loan debt, car debt, home loans, all kinds of things, right? As challenging as you're going to find marriage is, you don't need to add that in because that's going to cause all kinds of friction. Um, so yeah, if you're not, I'd say run like the wind. Okay, number two, have you both accumulated some assets on your own? Now, I don't mean are you both wealthy, but I mean have you both demonstrated that while you were single, you've been able to do something with yourself? Or have you just been a couch potato living with mom and dad and just saying, you know, I'll kick back? No. Are, this is because that demonstrates whether what will you be like when you're married are you going to be dependable it's practical so yeah if not I would say leave uh, are you both thrifty kind of goes along with number two if you're not learn to be because guess what when you get married uh, you're gonna have more expenses if you didn't realize that right if you're not saving now you're gonna have an even harder time when you've got multiple people in the household and then little children come along. So it's, it's better to be thrifty. So those are just some things. Now again, are there other things? Of course. But those are some things if you haven't thought about them. Plant a few seeds there. All right. Another question. How long should it take before marrying someone? What do you think? Oh, it depends. Okay, so we've got a fence riding position. Okay. Not too long and not too short. Oh, I like that. Okay. Fence writing still, but uh, good, yes. Not too long and not too short, okay. <laughs> okay. Two years, okay. All right. Well, here, here's a thought. In answering that question, we need to remember these principles about planning and acting rapidly. First of all, you need to get to know them, right? People tend to be complicated, so it might take a little time to get to know them. Here's some things. Scrutinize closely during courtship. Courtship isn't that time where you just say, Oh, no, it, it, it is a time for scrutiny. It's no time for what, you know, dreamy nonsense. You may have heard about castle building. Mm -hmm. you, you don't need all that. If you can't live in a castle, don't even need to worry about thinking about them, right? Here's a weird look at it. Do what Jesus does during his courtship phase. His courtship phase is called the investigative judgment. You should be investigating them. Not saying, I'm going to see if I can trap you, but look for problems. If you're not looking for them, you're being foolish. Investigate them. Here's an idea. Consider a background check. I'm dead serious. How about a credit check? Why not? Now, they might balk and say, well, how could you? I take offense at that. Okay, all right. Let's say they do. Maybe just tell them, you know what? You're right, I don't need those checks. They just gave you the answer. Tell them no. Let them go. Now, I know you are thinking, wait a minute, what? But honestly, think about that. There is wisdom in that. All right. Now, once you have explored whatever questions you think are the most important, whatever God has shown you from a study of his word, once your questions are answered, at that point, how long should it take? Now you move from the investigation phase to the decision phase, and decisions are, right? What good is waiting going to do? You've already had your answers, questions, your answer, questions answered, right? Notice what Jesus does. Uh, engagement should be short. Uh, Notice what Jesus does. When the fruit is brought forth, immediately he put it in the sickle because the harvest has come. Christ is waiting with longing desire for the manifestation of himself in his church. When the character of Christ should be perfectly re reproduced in his people, then he will come to claim of his own. He doesn't say, let me just look at them some more. He says, no, now I'm going to take them. Same thing here. Once you have your questions answered, just act. Move forward, get it done. I mean, why would you want to wait? Right? So both principles apply in marriage. Counting the cost, investigating, making sure that everything is correct. Number two, move forward without delay. 
Now, another one, an uh, example right here. And again, we could do this for home, we could do this for job, there's a lot of different things, but let's just, let's just take a home here. I figure this is one where maybe not everyone has a lot of experience that might be helpful. So let's, let's work through buying a home together. So now, with your partner again, you got another 30 seconds. I want you to list all the steps involved in buying a home. You got 30 seconds. I hear a flurry of activity there. Let's see, has anybody got it where you think, okay, I've got the six or seven most critical steps? How many here are clueless? Okay, we got, we got a few honest people, okay. That's why I figured, I figured I'd put this up here because this is super important. But you know, you're not exactly taught this in most schools, so I thought maybe this would be helpful here. So if you're not sure how to begin, and if anyone has not taught you this, you might even take a few notes here. I think this will be super practical for you, okay? And yes, I have bought many, many, many homes, so I, I have some experience here. Okay, what do you think the first step might be in buying a home? Oh yeah, I heard location, location. That might be the most important, maybe. I'll give you a hint. That's from the, oh, how much? Okay, that's from the secular world is location, 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 although that's extremely important. The condition of the home? Oh, my. Come on, folks. Should you call a real estate agent first, you think? Yeah. Yes and no. Okay. <laughs> Should you draw up a design for your dream home? Your castle? No. No. This is not your first step. Now, I'm ashamed of you. You should have thought of this. Gather godly counsel on the subject. Yes, pray, consult things that we're told. Okay, there you go. Okay. Now, there's much that could be said. I know that I've left off probably 15 or 20 extremely important things, but here's just a few that came to my mind that I know I've read about. What are we told makes for a good home? Do you remember any particular things? Okay, sunshine and fresh air. Okay, so, all right. What? In the country, okay. Yeah, here's a few of them. Country setting, not in the city. By the way, just a whole lot more pleasant. It is. Okay. Uh, build on an elevation. You know, so good drainage, right? You don't want to be kind of in a valley. It might look pretty, but, you know, you're going to have problems with water ponding and making a smell and being very unhealthy for you. Uh, trees nearby, we're told about that, you know. It could smell good, it's healthy. Now, there's also nothing wrong with using a little bit of common sense. What are some common sense things that would maybe dictate a home? Money? Yeah. Okay, do you have enough money? Are there utility? Okay, all right. Uh, how about this? Can you afford it? Yeah. Here's one. Yes, you want trees nearby. That's a wonderful thing. But do you want them right next to your house? Why not? They could fall on your house, right? And they can block that sunshine, make it a little bit dark. You don't get as much good sunshine in there. That's one thing. Uh, yes, certainly the money. I didn't write that down here, but that we're getting to that. Uh, you might want to have your home near where you're going to work, right? Do you really want a 45-mile commute? When I lived in California, there was a time before I left where, out of necessity, I wanted having a job where I had to work Oh, I don't know where it was. It was probably a good 40 or so miles from my house, but I had to take all these freeways. And on bad days, it could take almost three hours one way. I wound up having, this was a startup company because I used to be in the high tech industry. I'm glad I got out. I actually had to, they just said, no problem. 
We'll just buy an air mattress you can have it in your cubicle. You can just sleep there. <laughs> That's the world's solution for you. I didn't stay long. As soon as I got my home taken care of in North Carolina, I split. Okay, so sec okay, the first step, godly counsel, which I would mingle with prayer, of course. Second step, yeah, how about counting the cost, right? Money, if you're, if you're just thinking God will provide, well, yeah, maybe through your industry and, you know, being sensible. But yeah, count the cost by doing your homework, okay? So even before you see how much money, you need to know how much it's going to be. So look. Look at existing homes in the area. You can get a lot of the stuff that's publicly available data. This is not hard to come by. Look at homes in the area, see what they're going for. Give you some idea, or can you live in the area you're thinking about? Um, if you're considering building a home, maybe instead of an existing home, you better find out how much land costs, how much does it cost per acre? Is that in the realm of possibility or are we living in dreamland? Uh, let's see, oh yeah. You don't just want to get land. If you're going to build a house, you need to know how much it costs to develop the land. You know, clear things, get it ready, right? Could you maybe offset the cost? Like around here, you can get trees cleared, sell them, that can help defray the cost. So do you want to do that? There's also, and again, this is if you're not buying an existing home. Do you need to put stuff in to get it ready? Culverts for drainage, septic, electricity, water, all these things. These are very real, and guess what? They all cost... Money, that's right. Okay. The great thing, though, is in this age that we live in right now, you can find out a whole bunch of this stuff just by going online. So you don't have to drive around. You can just sit around and do it. But you can start driving around. Just start looking for signs in the area. Knock on doors if things are for sale and just start getting information. You can talk to neighbors. You can learn a lot even without an agent. Now, you can also get a lot of stuff easier with an agent because they're experienced, but you can get a lot of information just by doing your homework. Okay, third step. Let's see, so you've gathered some data, right? You're counting how much it might cost. So now let's say that you know it's going to cost umpteen thousand dollars. I'm assuming we're not talking millions here. Now, after you know how much it's going to cost, what do you think you need to do? Budget, yeah. Why don't you, if you know it's going to cost this much, that's great. If it's going to cost you $800,000, you might need to see if you have $800,000, right? Okay. So, yeah, compare with your funds. Can you pay for it outright? That's wonderful, if you can. Uh, let's say that you can't. Are you, like, really far short of paying for it, or are you sort of close? Because, you know, if you're really far off of it, you might say, do I really want this great big burden on me? Uh, let's say that you're somewhere in the middle. So if you do need a load, can you realistically pay it off in, I didn't put 30 years there, what did I put? Five years. Because you want to get out of debt fast, right? You may need to have it, but I'd say plan for making it real short so you can get out of that. Very, very, make life easier than it, you know. Life is hard. You don't need to make it any harder than it already is. All right, let's see here. Fourth step. You've... You've considered God the counsel with prayer. You have estimated how much it would cost. You've looked in your bank to see if you're anywhere close. What do you think you might need to do then? Make a decision. Okay. <laughs> I like the way you're thinking. I would say pray for God to help you find your perfect home because you've gotten a general idea, but now you need to know specifically which one. Yeah, pray for that as you're actively searching for it. Don't just say, you know, just put it in my mind and you say, you know, I saw it. it was at 1625 Willow Brook. That doesn't happen, okay? You, you, you'll be looking for it and you'll find your Willow Brook or whatever it is. Okay, so just spend time each day looking until it's obvious that your prayer is answered. We, we're told that we should do everything we can in our power to answer our own prayers. In this context, that's what it looks like. Now, I think Mboshe is right in the fifth step here, yeah. When you have found what you believe is the answer to your prayers, is your dream home or land or whatever, act decidedly. Don't just say, you know, let me just sort of glory in this idea and let me just be so thankful. Let me ponder what I'll do. If you do that, guess what's going to happen? Somebody else is going to say, that's the answer to my prayer, and they're going to beat you out, and you're going to think, what was I doing? <laughs> don't just say, well, I think I have enough money, but I just, I don't know. You better hop to it. 
So make an offer. And when you make an offer, here's some things to consider. If there's a room to offer somewhat less, yeah, do it. I mean, this is just life. But on the other hand, don't be looking to make the sharpest deal possible. That doesn't show that we've been with Christ either, right? Love your neighbors yourself. And then here's one for you. If the property is in fact perfect, it doesn't necessarily have to be cheap. Save money, but it doesn't have to be cheap. Because if it's so valuable to you, it might have a cost attached to it. So, you know, weigh these things. All right, so notice, just in running through the home buying process there, both principles again apply. One is count the cost. That's where you take some time. You make a plan and you investigate. But then, once you've got that all figured out, move without delay. Move quickly. If, you're, if you look at people that are successful in life, and I mean it in a worldly sense, you know, you might say, well, they're just gifted with good business sense or something. Well, maybe they are, but a lot of it isn't that, you know, they just sort of always know how to just choose the right things and they're so fast. No. They move, behind the scenes, they're taking time, but then, yes, they just move quickly. Occasionally, they'll make big blunders, but on average, they will come out ahead. They understand these two principles. So this is, I mean, these are just good life principles. Okay, so now, though, marriage, buying a home, job, and other such things, those are all important, but guess what? It's not the biggest choice. Biggest choice you're going to have to make is what? Okay, giving your heart to God, okay. And let's make it a little more, little more specific here. Yeah, it's going to be whether or not you're going to follow Jesus, but what does that look like, especially in our day? Well, one, the Bible again, when he's talking about salvation, says, choose you this day, today if you will hear his voice, behold, now is the accepted time, now is the day of salvation, that's right. So do it rapidly, that's true, after counting the cost. But notice, in our day, it's more general than just some general appeal for Jesus. Uh, there's a huge test coming on this world about our loyalty to Jesus. Did you know this? Okay. What is that big test? Yeah. How, how we're going to worship God. Yeah. The Sunday law crisis. That's true. So guess what? Let's put these two principles into practice now. Now is the time to be counting the cost because we don't have that law. Learn everything you can about worshiping Jesus truly and making that beginning really settled in your mind about following him no matter what may happen. So that, guess what? When the Sunday law does happen, is that, is that, will that be the time to say, let me sit back and let me carefully count things? No. At that point, you need to be so settled that you can move without delay. You're going to move swiftly without any hesitation or delay, and you'll make your decision to stand for Jesus. It's decision time, and decision means it's already done. You've already done the homework. You're ready to just answer. All right, so what about you? Let's make it personal. Will you count the cost of forsaking all for Jesus? Do the homework? Oh, man, we're quiet here. Yeah, I was going to say, you're supposed to say yes. Okay, yes. Now, will you choose by his grace to move unhesitatingly when asked if you will be 100% faithful to Jesus when that final crisis, the Sunday law test, hits? I hope so. Yeah, there won't, there's, I can't think of any good reason to wait. Why postpone doing your homework and why postpone once you know the answer? Will you begin following Jesus today? Okay. Let's go ahead and let's close in prayer. Father in heaven, I thank you for the chance to share, and I ask that this material here would be practical, that we would remember the two great principles of counting the cost and moving rapidly once we have a clear answer, but also I pray that maybe even just the, some of the specifics concerning marriage and concerning buying a home or land, that these would stick in um, young people's minds and would be helpful to them in the perhaps not too distant future. I ask that you will give us good common sense and that we will be able to compare that prayerfully with what you counsel us in Scripture and the spirit of prophecy. I thank you for directing our steps. May we hear your still, small voice so that we know are we to move straight ahead or are we off the path and we might need to veer a little bit one way or the other to be back on track. I thank you, Father. May we honor you with the choices we make today. 
May we make decisions for you without delay in your name. Amen. Thanks for watching our assembly here at Watch of the Hills. We hope you received precious information. Remember to like, share, and subscribe. Also, hit that notification bell so you know when we upload our next program. Follow us on Facebook and on Instagram. The links are in the description box below. Have a great day, and until then, be well.